It's 2023 and some people still cannot believe that some Asians actually talk like this. Yeah, this went viral on Instagram from silly to serious. I'm gonna go ahead and put this in the silly category, but a lot of people had a lot of serious takeaways from it. It has to do with nature versus nurture, environment, linguistics, self-perception versus societal perception. Let's run the clip from Filipino food influencer Adonis Eats. Dude, you're Asian. Why are you talking like that? Man, let me tell you, I've been hearing that my whole life, okay? And real talk, I only ever really hear it when I'm outside the Bay Area. One of the earliest times I can remember is when I was in the military. I was in North Carolina. On the weekend, we wear our street clothes. And I was standing in line with my friends and we're waiting for the chow hall to open so we could have our lunch, okay? We're wearing our street clothes. I'm telling a story to my friends. So people are cracking up when I'm done with my story. I turn around, this black dude that's behind me, his eyes get big, right? <laughs> he says, hey bro, no offense, but let me ask you a question. What nationality are you? I said, man, well, I'm Filipino. He's like, Filipino, what is that? Is that some type of Samoan? I said, nah, it's a type of Asian. He's like, okay, well, where I'm from, we have Asian people, but they Asian Asian, man. They not like you. I said, what you mean like me? He said, well, I was listening to your story. I was captivated. It was hella cracking me up, right? I thought you was just another brother, a black dude. And then you turned around and I was like, whoa, he an Asian too. <laughs> I said, man, where I'm from, it don't matter if you're Filipino, Asian, white, black, Hispanic, Samoan, we all talk the same. He said, I mean, I think that in a way it's pretty simple. It's a very simple discussion. That's the neighborhood that he grew up in. That's how he talks. Um, you know, but people perceive him visually to look a certain way. So they're making assumptions about his culture. And I feel, want to say that this talk has been going on for uh, minority groups in America, Andrew, since the beginning, since the 60s, 70s. But I want to say specifically for Asian people, it hasn't popped up until like the 90s. Right, yeah. But I feel like even with this age of social media, there's even been more discussion about it recently in the past like 10 years. Because I feel like back in the day, in the 80s and 90s, if you knew the Asian kid who grew up in that neighborhood and the Asian kid talked like everybody else in that neighborhood it just made logical sense. Right, right, right. But and nowadays with the internet, people who are ignorant, who have never been exposed to an Asian from a different neighborhood is seeing this and they're like, wait, what's going on? Right, but to play the devil's advocate, and I'm not saying I fully support this, but I could see where they're coming from. They're saying that people may be ex exaggerating the accent to seem cooler for social media points. Uh, now, do I think that this is the situation for Adonis Eats? No, not at all. I really think he just grew up in Oakland and he just talks like that and then he's in the military and he's describing this instance where everybody's confused. Probably maybe the guy approaching him that was African-American was from the South or something like that. And then uh, Adonis Eats is explaining like, this is just how it is in the Bay Area. All right, everybody, we're going to get into the comment section and the discussion at hand. So please hit that like button and check out other episodes of the Hot Pop Boys. Let us know if you like the news we cover in the commentary. We Man, got. I think I read like all 3,000 comments in the comment section, Andrew. People were going back and forth, but I noticed probably, and I did see this address a little bit, I think the most overlooked aspect is, and I'm saying you mean this, of this, of of this, this whole aspect that I didn't even see that many comments about, is it's literally how you look. Because Adonis eats is Filipino, but he may have more of a like be perceived as Chinese immediately when you look at him. Like he okay. kind of looks like a really buff Jeff Staple. Sure. So I'm saying that that already could shift everything because we have a friend who's a boxing and basketball coach in Seattle, and he looks like Peyton Siva. Like exactly, like he gets mistaken for Peyton Siva when we're out. Like he was black and Samoan. He was black and Samoan, but he's full Filipino. He nobody's gonna say anything to him, even if. To be honest, I'm not saying that he uses it, but even if he did say, like, even the N-word, probably people are just going to accept it because he looks black himself. Right, right, right. So it, you're saying that, it, especially because Filipinos, we know that within the Filipino nationality and identity, they have a lot of different shades, okay? Right, they have, a, like, a, some and, Filipino. I've met Filipinos that, like, look white, and, right? and there are certain shades of, the Fili of Filipino people who kind of get the pass, and then... Obviously, on the other end, people who would not get the pass. Right, and this, and it's crazy because we're talking about this like melanated pass, but literally, I think that that is probably how it works to some people. I'm not saying for yeah. everybody, but from what? what I've seen, even in the and Latino community, sometimes they go off that. Oh, you're Dominican. You say it. Are you Puerto Rican? Are you this type of Puerto Rican? Like it's it goes like that. I did think it was pretty funny though that he said Asian Asian because like that's actually a term that I heard from even other Asians who are not as Asian. Like they called me an Asian Asian because not one I I think I look like the typical I guess East Asian look. 
Right. Like and, you, you, where else could you be from? Yeah. Now, maybe if I was fully tattooed and I had a different voice and I was carrying myself in a different way, maybe I don't get the Asian Asian uh, title. I, I just yeah. get the Asian title. I actually <laughs> think in this story, uh, let's just say this fellow soldier was from South Carolina or whatever. He was just saying, oh, man, I've never seen an East Asian talk like that. And I'm perceiving you right now, Adonis, to be East Asian. And Adonis is like, nah, man, I'm a Filipino from the Bay. That's how we all are. Mm. So I think that that, to me, is the biggest, like, easiest way to explain away this particular instance. But there was a lot of, like, more macro discussions that came from this. Um, real quick, Andrew, I want to bring up that in 1992, it was a huge deal when they found out that uh, this guy named uh, Theo um, uh, Murakai... Yeah was uh, black, not black. And he was the DJ on 92.3, which th was the biggest hip hop station in LA. And then he made a, uh, an actor appearance on Moesha as a heartthrob and everybody was shocked. Yeah, because he doesn't, because back, I mean, he just grew up, he just talks the way he grew up. Right. Yeah. So, because uh, he was uh, from the Bay Area. All right, you guys, let's get into the comments section and some of our takeaways. Um, there was a ton of people who just said, Andrew, you do not talk your ethnicity. You talk your culture and you talk your environment. I got a degree in linguistics. It's all about your environment and what you relate to or what you adapt to. He just sounds like his environment. What's the problem? Somebody said, America is the only place where you're identified by the color of your skin or race before the color of your passport. What a goofy society this is. Mm. And then there was somebody saying, well, the people who are probably ignorant about this probably, and they were blaming it on the <laughs> Americans in the South. They said are mostly from the South who haven't grown up around enough types of people and enough Asians who grew up around like black people, for example. Yeah, I could see this argument because in the coastal cities, like even a lot, of, like for example, Andrew, in New York, a lot of the people that a lot of people perceive to be black could be from Dominican Republic. They could be from uh, Guyana. Could they be could, from Cuba even, you know. You, the Caribbean, Africa. Yeah. So a lot of things in, in the city, big cities like LA and New York or the Bay Area, they're very, very mixed up. But I, it is true, and I'm not blaming the South, it does seem like their understanding of race is like back in like 1952. Sometimes. Yeah, 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 yeah. Like an old, they have an old world, like there's only two heritage groups which is, uh, you know, mm -hmm. heritage whites and then heritage but, black But Americans. you know what's funny is that I know plenty of Asians from the South that kind of talk with the Southern twang or speak in a way that you would not expect an Asian to speak. And then they're well, all, Texas don't count, Mount. Texas is the new South. No, Texas. no, no. They're from Georgia or Atlanta, and, and they're from all over. So I just think these people just have not been exposed to a lot of people. Or here's another theory, is that these people leaving the comments they don't want Asians to sound like that. They actively don't think Asians should. Now that, right. that, from that grows a whole bunch of other questions like, oh, how should Asians sound, right? But anyways, keep going. Um, somebody said, because the majority of folks that are talking like that are forcing that talk, and I'm not sold yet that you aren't yet, Adonis. This was a comment, I'm assuming this is from a, a, a black person that may be a little bit skeptical, saying that like, so many people in the past have used this accent and I'm not like, you know, I, I'll just call it out. You know, shout out to Aquafina. We're friends with her. She got accused of it. I'm not saying that she did or not. Iggy Azalea, um, you know, like other people, I guess in the past, Pink. Do you remember that girl, Pink? Yeah. That, that, you artist. know, I'm saying that like forcing a black scent to get more cool points. Right. So I'm saying that that's the fear is that some people are doing that versus people just being like, oh, you just grew up in that environment, so you talk like that environment. Right, because it is considered a cool accent to have. It's, it means that you're part of like, oh, uh, street you, culture. You know no, what's no. cool. It's part of, you listen to hip hop. Right. You're not you're, like, do 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 do. Yeah, you're hey, not. Hey, neighbor, I'm Flanders. Like, <laughs> you're not a nerd. You're not a dork. You're not a square. That's the assumptions and the implication. So uh, people, I mean, a lot of people would consider that's the, the American accent of, of flavor. Right, right, right. right. Um, the seasoned yeah, accent. the spicy uh, accent. Somebody said, it's because Asians are seen as subhuman and incapable of adapting to their own environments, which includes the way we dress, live, and speak. The Ishi media expects Asian actors to either use broken pigeon or very posh accents instead of localized ones. Everyone's so used to telling us Asians how to think or speak like we're all made in the same factory. Wow. This, um, is, this is actually a pretty good comment because I do feel like a lot of people out there who are accusing other people of faking that accent. It's like, well, how are Asians supposed to talk? Now, it is true. Some people fake it. So they have their regular voice and they have their, what, accented voice. No, right? I've definitely heard something that I was kind of like, oh, yeah, that yeah, doesn't, yeah, sound, I, that I, doesn't I, sound that cool when you 
try to put on your cool voice. But then it also comes to code switching because Drake code switches. You've seen Drake in interviews and he sounds almost like he, he doesn't he, no, rap no, like no. that. Drake sounds like he's from like eight different socioeconomic statuses in eight different countries. Exactly. Like he's, like, he's like an eight by eight grid, like 64 but different But because personas. Drake is also half black, then I'm but, sure he gets the pass. But, but well, not only that, Andrew, he pulls it off. And people have criticized him too, though. Yeah, that's true. That's true. Um, some people said... People don't understand that Filipinos can assimilate with the locals better than other Asians. I would agree with this. I would agree that Filipinos adapt better than Chinese to the local culture of their neighborhood, but I've seen it both ways. Mm -hmm. I've seen uh, some Chinese be super adaptive, but if you made me say like, you know, percentage ratios, it seems like Filipinos are more subculturally adaptive. On average, sure. Yeah, yeah, for yes, sure. I, I could roll with that. Um, somebody says, yeah, but for some reason, everybody wants to attribute these cool accents to the Bay Area, but not to black people like we weren't the catalyst to this originally. Um, I don't mind it when Asians use African-American vernacular English. My only problem is y'all can't acknowledge the culture that you adopted as your own. This is not a Bay Area accent. This is A-A-V-E. Mm. Show us your the respect. Just say that you got it from black people because not everybody in the Bay talks like that. Obviously, it's true. When you go to like Burlingame, you could be born and raised. That's technically Bay Area. I would not. I would expect you to talk very proper and white if you're from. Yeah, Burlingame. but when people do say the Bay, they are talking about a specific kind of experience that is distinct from other parts. Right. You're saying if you're like Tom Brady, who's from the Yay area, he's not from no, the no, Yay no. area. No, no, no. Tom Brady is from the Bay Area. He's not from the Yay area. But I, I do think this comment I can somewhat empathize with because I think that there is a sense that people want to talk like black people, but they don't want to be empathetic or acknowledge where they got the accent from or or the community that they got the accent from. Right. You know the, what I mean? The Yay area, or I don't even know if I'm saying that right, the Bay Area accent, that's probably heavily colored by the, the rap music, yeah. the Thiz yeah. music, right? Mac Dre, E-40, yeah. et cetera, et cetera. Andre yeah. Nicotina. I'm, I'm sure it's more led by black people in that community. Makes for sense. sure, for sure. I mean, I, I can to totally understand and empathize with this comment. Um, somebody said, this is a black girl. She said, I immediately knew he's from the Bay. It's not about speaking black. It's just about culture and vibe. He sounds like those cool ass uncles that used to break dance in the 1980s. I love it. Yo, all right. I have a question. And this is for the people watching. Let me know in the comments down below. I guess if you're somebody, and let's say you're an Asian-looking person who has this accent, who grew up like this, right? Is Should it be fair to assume that you may, may be a little bit more empathetic to the black experience in America because you talk like a black person? And I put this in quotes because you'll see it in what? another comment, right? But I'm just saying, like... Is that safe to assume that if you talk like this, you probably were around that group of people and therefore you may understand their culture and their background better? For sure, yeah. for sure. I mean, if I talk like this and uh, I'm using all this like cattle rancher slang, you think that I would be more <laughs> simple, like understanding the plot of, you the know, farmers. the, the, the you... taxes on beef right now or the different soybeans that are getting taxed because I want to ship them to China. Well, well, if you talk like this, I'm going to assume that you're not uh, disgusted by a rodeo. Right, you do not hate country music <laughs> and you probably don't like that song that uh last night i let the liquor talk because that ain't real country <laughs> um, i like that song but this girl really she left a ton of very interesting comments like i said i think there's valid arguments to go all around but i thought her per responses were particularly thoughtful she said you know my whole life i've moved around at different places been around different people i don't live by outsiders or insiders that's my opinion that's just such a limiting and small way to live you know by me do you do you i'll do me and by me i'm not being limited by low vibrational divisive drama i'm an open hearted kind of gal um yeah i think different people view this discussion especially in the black community viewing other people using aave with different levels yeah. of uh, extremity, right? For sure. And then there's also this whole conversation about people who are saying, oh, well, he's talking black. And then someone responded and said, oh, what do you mean? Why do you always just reduce black culture down to just this accent to slang, to rap slang? Like, why does it have to be like that? Right. This, uh, this African-American guy said, I hate that term. I, it gets tossed around so aggressively. Ebonics, A-A-V-E. Oh. I just prefer to call it hood vernacular. Or I, if you grew up in the hood, you will talk like this. <laughs> right, right, right. Yeah, uh, other people were talking about the hood way of talking 
being traced back to Southern white rednecks and the Appalachians. There was, was a whole book. I mean, other people were bringing it up from, uh, was it Thomas Sowell? Yeah yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. So this was another thing. Somebody said, um, this black guy said, people say I always talk white and I should be talking black. And I'm like, bro, I'm just me. And a Mexican chimed in and said, when I worked in San Mateo, I had so many white Americans shocked that I didn't have a Mexican accent. Mm. So these, it, you know, it's almost like inverse where the Asians, people are shocked that they're talking black and they're shocked. Other people probably within their community and outside of the community are shocked that this black and this Mexican guy are not talking black and Mexican. Ah. But then this girl even said, I was Filipino and I got called a flip flop and a coconut for talking white. And uh, actually, when I was growing up in South Seattle, Andrew, I had a friend that was Filipino that more acted white. Mm -hmm. And we were growing up around so such an urban environment, people used to call him a flip-flop. Right, right. Like, not everybody, but some people did. Um, some people just said, 100%, the whole Bay Area vibe is just different. I've been here my whole life, and I know it's a bubble and a privilege because I grew up around so many different cultures and ethnicities. It's beautiful. I love us. But other people outside of the Bay just wouldn't understand how we melt together. It's literally because we're all stoners, and it's just easier to talk to each other. We just melt more here than other parts of the country. Mm. Agree or disagree, Andrew? Like, the the... the if there were all a bunch of cheeses in a pot, the Bay Area just got that temperature a little hotter than everywhere yeah, else. Yeah, I, I think the Bay Area and I think New York to an extent are also pretty much two big melting pots of America. Um, this comment also said, oh, people just think black culture is a free-for-all. You can just take what you want. I'm sick of this. I don't like it. People don't want to acknowledge the pain that black people went through and the history that we went through to even have these voices and have this accent. Right, you're saying the, the, the development of what some people used to call non-standard American yeah. English has a long, like, yeah. so many layers to it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I understand this. I get it. I, I, I agree, too, to an extent. But I also think, like, I guess, like, that type of culture or whatever that accent is or, or that attitude is has also made a lot of money and has become very, very cool that you can't blame people for leaning into what is cool. Whether right. that's from a young age, from when they're five years old right, to one year right, old. Right. Whether the exposure is hyper-legitimate or it's extrapolated upon or completely fabricated, yeah. right? It's just, yeah. It's, it's part of American culture now, in a way. Somebody said, Filipino indigenous are black and African looking, so are we Asian? We're different. Uh, DJ Cuber chimed in and said, Filipinos are Pacific Island Asians with Negrito roots crossed with Latino. And then this black guy said, Filipino are black Asians. If you know, you know. This guy came in and said, real uh, Filipinos are dark-skinned and Igorot, Lapita, um, but we just got mixed up over the years. So some of us are more Spanish looking or Chinese looking now, mm. you know, due to recent, like several hundred years of mixing. So, um, yeah, I guess this was person person was saying like Filipinos can talk like this because they are originally part Ita or part Negrito. So they're closer. They're part black themselves. I okay. Mean, yeah. I mean, yeah. I looked into it. It's definitely like. I could see where they're coming from, but it's just an interesting argument. Again, I think it's a lot of how you look, right? I mean, if you're part, if your bloodline is part Negrito and you have those bloodlines, you're probably going to be tanner skin. Right. And can, then, can, does and then that means that you can say it more. Manny Jacinto is from the Philippines. Can he use it? I don't know, because he doesn't look like... You know what I mean? He looks can more the like, Chinoy say it? Right. The Chinese Pinoys, can they say it? I need to know can if they, the owner can of they talk like this? Can the owner of Jollibee's talk like it? Um... Somebody said, I love how he says Samoan correctly, which is Samoa, because you got to say it more with the Samoan right, accent. Right, 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 because that, that word is from there. Yeah. This person said, I think it's more Southeast Asians because those are the ones that I know speak like this. People who not f are familiar, were not familiar with Southeast Asians are saying it's cultural appropriation. They're so used to the stereotypical nerdy Asians on TV, which are mainly Chinese, Koreans, and Japanese. I can't be mad at someone for being ignorant. They don't know any better. Um, so this was like kind of like talking about like it's okay if you're Southeast Asian. It's just not okay if you're East Asian because they are more like white people and Southeast Asians are more black. Oh, man. Seeing then now that's a whole nother video. That yeah, we yeah, yeah. But like I said, it goes back to my initial original discussion. People often use it. Uh, not everybody. They go off like a melanated scale. No, I mean, I know East Asians, some Chinese, and I even met a Korean who's pretty tan who like they could be Filipino. Or Taiwanese people. I know some right, Taiwanese, right, right. some Cantonese it's, people who who look like Southeast Asian. Who That's why I think this whole like Asian versus Asian Asian thing I think is really funny because I think it's, it is about facial features and, and skin tone, but it's also more about if you embody 
the Confucian values or not. Yeah, because it's true. All right, listen, guys. Most of the East Asian immigrants, they're going to pursue STEM careers. In STEM a careers, lot, you lot. cannot generally lean into AAVE to rise up a STEM ladder. Right. That, like, that's generally true. Like, of any corporation, Fortune 100, uh -huh. Fortune 500, whatever you want to say. Uh -huh. So I'm saying that that's, like, why I believe why people have that perception that, like, East Asians yeah. are white and Southeast Asians are black. Like, that's literally, like... How I hear some people you say You know what's goofy, man? Is that sometimes people who ask other Asians like, oh, man, Asians, how can you talk like this? It's like they're also Asian. Like other Asians question Asians' ability to talk like that. And again, I understand because sometimes there is some people who play it up for media reasons and have. But I guess at the end of the day, I guess who does it threaten me as another as a fellow Asian if some other Asian talks like that? I yeah, guess. I don't know, man. I, it's you guys let me know in the comments down below. All right, so this is a ongoing discussion. I think this is this question is going to pop up for the next fifty years as long as Asians talk like this. Like, like literally, there was a thousand other comments that I can't get to, Andrew. People uh, are talking about what if you are from North Philly, you're from South Philly, or like what level. At what point can you no, adopt what level of action? Because no, let's what? say, for example, Andrew, there's three extremities of everything, right? So let's say, for example, um, somebody has AAVA, AAVE influenced speech, but like there's a low level, there's a medium level, and there's a high level. At what level is okay for like what person from what fishbowl? I'm not asking. I don't know. Like if I sound just like Drake, if I were to make my voice like Drake. Are Drake, you talking about interview Drake? Hanging out with his no, rap friends, Drake, like, or hanging out with like that Bobby, that Bobby comedian, white comedian Drake, SNL Drake. Yeah, he's that's talking not, more white. Yeah, that's not. Is that too white? That's not. That doesn't count. Like, can I do that? Is that right? <laughs> I, I actually think another overlooked aspect here is that like a lot of people are saying because I've met people from the Oakland Bay Area that quote unquote even use more like street or hood slang than Adonis Eats, but their voice is more of like an alto. And his voice is like a baritone. And I think that that deep bass in his voice shifts the perception as well. Sure. Because like, there's like, almost like a, a, a decibel situation mm -hmm. going on more even than like tonage or like, you know what I mean? Like no, there's an the implication that if you have a lower voice, you're like more black or something. Right, you right, know what right. I mean? Like there's that, there's that belief. There's yeah. that feeling. Yeah. And also how should Asians sound, right? I think a lot of people associate what Asian guys with flat or more neutral I guess less, uh, what's it called, emotionally emotive? I think some people would just say corny voices. Yeah, corny, that's what some people corny high pitched voices. I didn't right? say, I know, I know that's, I've heard it described that way. No, no, no. Anyways, uh, guys, let me know in the comments down below uh, what your guys' overall takeaways are from this. I think at the end of the day, if that's how you grew up, that's how you grew up. Now, some people may doubt it and you may have to answer or you don't have to answer to it and these are just internet comments and who cares? Live your life. Yeah. Even if you're, faking it a little bit. I but, don't know. But, but honestly, it's going to come back down to like, you know, like there's your self-perception when you look in the mirror and then there's how society perceives your, uh, I guess, phenotype and the assumptions about your history, your background, what you have or you have not seen in terms of reps throughout your life based off your phenotype. And that's the society we live in right now. I hope everybody can just live more, you know, go to bigger cities and talk to more people across the different spectrums. All right, everybody. Thanks so much for watching. Until next time, we out. Peace. Peace.